Kia ora, everyone. Welcome to Tawa School Storytime. I um, want to apologise for the poor sound quality that we had on the live feed. So what I've decided to do is re-record this and um, so everybody can actually watch and so they don't miss out on what happened um, earlier on today. So first up, we're going to read the story Roadworks. Now with Transmission Gully happening, well not happening at the moment, but it was going on. This I guess really tells the story a little bit about how it all works. This is mainly for our younger viewers who are watching. So I'm going to read it together. Plan the road, plan the road, mark it on the map, hammer in the marking pegs, bing, bang, tap. Move the earth, move the earth, dig and cut and push. Clear a pathway for the road, screech, boom, whoosh. Load the dirt, load the dirt, scoop and swing and drop. Slam it down into the truck, bump, womp, whop. Tip the stones, tip the stones, lift and slide and dump. Lay the groundwork for the road, crash, roar, thump. Pack the ground, pack the ground, roll one way then back. Make the roadbed good and hard, clang, crunch, crack. Seal the road, seal the road, make it hot and squishy, spread the sticky tar and stones, sploshy, splashy, splishy. Roll the tar, roll the tar, make it firm and flat, squash it down and press it out, squelch, splock, splat. Stop the work, stop the work, time to break for lunch, sandwiches and drinks and fruit, gulp, slurp, crunch. Mark the road, mark the road, give the paint a squirt, paint the lines in nice and straight, whiz, splop, splurt. Raise the signs, raise the signs, dragon hoist and ram, force them down into their holes, thwack, whop, wham. Light the road, light the road, no one wants a crash. Test the lights to see them shine, flick, flack, flash. Plant the trees, plant the trees, dig and stamp and lug. Water them to help them grow, drip, drop, glug. Tidy up, tidy up, lift and load and sweep. Drive away those big machines, swish, chug, beep. Shout hooray, the work is done. Ready now, let's zoom. Drive along your brand new road. Toot, honk, vroom. And hopefully that will be us not too far away when Transmission Gully opens and there will be lots of cars driving along there as well. All right, we're gonna continue on with the twits. Now we're gonna be reading the house, the tree, and the monkey cage. If you remember from yesterday that Mr. Twit had played the trick on the, uh, Mrs. Twit with the shrinks and tied some balloons to try and stretch her out and let them go, but Mrs. Twit came right back down again and I don't think she was very happy about it. So we're gonna continue on reading. But that's enough of that. We can't go on forever watching these two disgusting people doing disgusting things to each other. We must get ahead with the story. Here is a picture of Mr. and Mrs. Twit's house and garden. Ugh, some house. It looks like a prison and not a window anywhere. Who wants your window? Mr. Twit said when they were building it. Who wants every Tom, Dick and Harry peeping in to see what you're doing? It didn't occur to Mr. Twit that windows were meant mainly for looking out of, not looking into. And what do you think of the ghastly garden? Mrs. Twit was the gardener. She was very good at growing thistles and stinging nettles. I always grow plenty of spiky thistles and plenty of stinging nettles, she used to say. They keep out nasty, nosy little children. Near the house, you can see Mr. Twit's workshed. To one side, there is the big dead tree. It never has any leaves on it because, well, it's dead. And not far from the tree, you can see the monkey cage. There are four monkeys in it and they belong to Mr. Twit. You will hear about them later. So there we go, you got the house over here and the horrible garden, monkey cage, and the dead tree. 
Hug tight, sticky glue. Once a week on Wednesdays, the Twits had bird pie for supper. Mr. Twit caught the birds and Mrs. Twit cooked them. Mr. Twit was good at catching birds. On the day before bird pie day, he would put the ladder up against the big dead tree and climb into the branches with a bucket of glue and a paintbrush. The glue he used was something called hug tight and it was stickier than any other glue in the world. He would paint it along the tops of all the branches and then go away. As the sun went down, birds would fly in from all around to roost for the night in the big dead tree. They didn't know, poor things, that the branches were all sweared with horrible hug tight. The moment they landed on a branch, their feet stuck and that was the end of that. The next morning, which was bird pie day, Mr. Twit would climb up the ladder again, grab all the wretched birds that were stuck on the tree. Didn't matter what kind they were, you know, thrushes, blackbirds, sparrows, crows, uh, little jenny wrens or robins, anything. They all went into the pot for Wednesday's bird pie supper. Four sticky little boys. On one Tuesday evening, after Mr. Twit had been up the ladder and smeared the tree with hug tight, Four little boys crept into the garden to look at the monkeys. They didn't care about the thistles and the stinging nettles, not when there were monkeys to look at. After a while, they got tired of looking at the monkeys, so they explored further into the garden and found the ladder leaning up against the big dead tree. They decided to climb it up, climb up it, just for fun. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, the next morning, when Mr. Twit went out to collect the birds for um, his bird pie, he found four miserable little boys sitting in the tree, stuck as tight as they could be in the seats of their pants to the branches. There were no birds because the presence of the boys had scared them away. Mr. Twit was furious. Is there no birds for my boy tonight? He shouted. Then I'll have to be boys instead. He started to climb the ladder. Boy pie might be better than bird pie. He went on grinning horribly. More meat and not so many tiny little moans. The boys were terrified. He's going to boil us cried one of them. He'll stew us alive, wailed the second one. He'll cook us with carrots, cried the third. But the fourth little boy, who had more, a bit more sense than the others, whispered, Hey, listen, I've just had an idea. We're, the only, we're only stuck by the seat of our pants. So quick, unbutton your pants and slip out of them and fall to the ground. Mr. Twit had reached the top of the ladder and was just about to grab the nearest boy when all of a sudden they tumbled out of the tree and ran for home with their naked bottoms winking at the sun. The Great Upside Down Monkey Circus. Now for the monkeys. The four monkeys in the cage in the garden were all one family. They were Muggle Wump and his wife and their two small children. But what on earth were Mr. and Mrs. Twit doing with monkeys in their garden? Well, in the old days, they had both worked in a monk circus as monkey trainers. They used to teach monkeys to do tricks, to dress up in human clothes and to smoke pipes and all the rest of that kind of nonsense. Today, although they were retired, Mr. Twit still wanted to train monkeys. It was his dream that one day he would open the first great upside down monkey circus in the world. Upside down monkey circus? That meant that the monkeys had to do everything upside down. They had to dance upside down on their hands with their feet in the air. They had to play football upside down. They had to balance one on top of the other upside down with Muggle Wump at the bottom and the smallest baby, mon baby monkey at the very top. They even had to eat and drink upside down. And that is not an easy thing to do because food and water had to go up your throat instead of down it. In fact, it's almost impossible. But the monkeys simply had to do it. Otherwise, they'd get nothing. All this sounds pretty silly to you and me. It sounded pretty silly to the monkeys too. They absolutely hated having to do everything upside down and all this nonsense every day. It made them giddy standing on their heads for hours on end. Sometimes the two small monkey children would faint with so much blood going to their heads. But Mr. Twit didn't care about that. He kept them practicing for six hours every day. And if they didn't do as they were told, Mr. Twit would soon come running with her beastly, beastly stick. Right. From tomorrow, we're going to read The Roly Poly Bird to the Rescue. This is going to sound a little bit interesting. So hopefully, hopefully there's going to be some good news for the monkeys. Well, that's all for today. Hope you continue to look after yourself. Remember to be kind to one another. And we'll aim to be back 10 o'clock tomorrow morning with a live feed. Hopefully, if the sound is working better. All right. See you soon. Ka kite anō.